Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the Hasselbeck's triangle. Hasselbeck's triangle is also called inguinal triangle. So it is bounded by the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle and the inferior epigastric artery and below it is bounded by the inguinal ligament okay so this is the triangular space in the anterior abdominal wall on the medial aspect and lower part of the anterior abdominal wall and this triangular area is bounded by the lateral border of the lateral border of rectus abdominis that is the that forms the medial boundary laterally is bounded by the inferior epigastric artery epigastric artery below it is bounded by the inguinal ligament this is the inguinal ligament so we got the boundary of the boundaries boundaries of the inguinal triangle or Hasselbeck's triangle if you go to the boundary again anterior number one this is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle rectus abdominis muscle we see as linea semilunaris lateral border okay lateral border okay we see as linea semilunaris okay so then we get the inferior epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery is a branch of the external iliac artery it passes as a content of rectus sheath behind the rectus abdominis muscle and around the umbilicus it anastomos with that of the superior epigastric artery that is a terminal branch of the internal thoracic artery okay and this is number two number three is the inguinal ligament inguinal ligament also called pauper's ligament pauper's ligament okay inguinal ligament is formed by the backward folding of the aponeurosis of external oblique it extends from the anterior superiliac spine anterior superiliac spine to the pubic tubercle here to the pubic tubercle okay so we got the Hasselbeck triangle or this is the same as the inguinal triangle this triangle is again divided into into two parts by means of the obliterated umbilical artery okay this is the obliterated obliterated umbilical artery umbilical artery okay this is this is this this is the obliterated umbilical artery to make it that way 
this is the obliterated umbilical artery okay so obliterated umbilical artery it divides the inguinal triangle into medial part the lateral part so direct inguinal hernia may come from the lateral part because this part is weak this is covered by the fascia transversalis and this is covered by fascia transversalis plus reinforced by the conjoint tendon we'll get here conjoint tendon we know that conjoint tendon is the united tendon between the internal oblique and transversus abdomen so medial part is stronger but yes hernia is possible either from that side from lateral part lateral direct inguinal hernia medial direct inguinal hernia if the muscles are weak due to surgery due to trauma the conjoint tendon cannot support properly we may have hernia there this part is naturally weak we may have hernia from here that is possible so we got the boundary and boundary is of the Hasselbeck triangle I will remember the boundaries what is our mnemonic okay mnemonic okay you can remember very easily by this rural rural east india rural east india okay so rural that is the rectus abdominis muscle we have here rectus abdominis muscle here this is the rectus abdominis muscle rectus abdominis muscle east means the epigastric artery it is in the lower abdomen so it is inferior epigastric artery here number two and i stands for inguinal ligament that forms the base of the triangle so just remember rural east india r stands for the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle and e stands for inferior epigastric artery i stands for inguinal ligament i hope you can remember the Hasselbeck triangle and its importance with that of the direct inguinal hernia. So if you like my video, please subscribe me, support my channel, share the information with your friends and have a nice day. Bye now.